Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where and when in the world you are watching this video newscast. Welcome to This is the Week That Was in Virtualization Cloud and EUC, brought to you by the Virtualization Practice. I am Tom Howarth, and welcome to the latest of our news roundups. First, the headlines. The whole world went mad this week. Acquisitions galore. VMware bought Arkin, Symantec bought Bluecoat, Cavium bought QLogic, Samsung bought Joyent, Centrelink bought Elasticbox, and the one that most of the world will have heard of because it's the only one that anyone actually have heard of outside of the IT environment is Microsoft and LinkedIn. And in other news, very, very low key, but VMware have GA'd Photon Controller. It's now a dot one release, so yay hey, VMware are officially a container business. Okay. Acquisitions. VMware bought Arkin. For those of you who don't know, Arkin is a add-on to NSX effectively. It allows you to see your traffic flow within your NSX. So not just your virtual traffic flow, to actually it also will allow you to have in-depth analysis of your underlying physical traffic flow. So you can get a good view of your north-south traffic virtually through what physical switches, routers, etc. It's traveling. So this is a very, very good purchase for VMware. And I think it fills a gap that is is needed in the NSX product. It's very difficult to monitor NSX because from a VM perspective, once you're in an NSX tunnel, every hop is just one hop. Because it's, it basically just puts a tunnel between the source and target device with no you have no idea how it gets there it just gets there so makes troubleshooting quite difficult and Arkin were one of the better companies out there for this and it's as I say it's a very good purchase for them so I think they can integrate it properly which they shouldn't really have that much biz that much problem doing because Arkin was built around NSX anyway so it's probably just going to be a few GUI interactions and you, they should be there. So yeah, this is a good purchase. Semantic, they bought Bluecoat. Now Bluecoat are a newer generation security product product provider. And Symantec, obviously, everyone knows Symantec from AV. Now AV is sort of like lagging around. It's not really the cutting edge of, of, of uh, security. Bluecoat brings them more modern security products to sell and probably stops them becoming irrelevant. So I think, again, a very, very good purchase for Symantec. Cavium and QLogic. Now, Cavium are probably one of those companies that you've never, ever heard of, but I bet you're using their products. Cavium are in, they are a silicon provider they are in blue coat boxes. They're in. They count Dell as part of, the, of customers. EMC as the customers. They're in the C Citrix MPX. They're in F5s. So they're, they're big in security chips, networking, that sort of environment. QLogic, as we all know, provides HBAs and HBAs ASICs. So this is quite a good purchase for Cavium and also for QLogic, except for one minor horrible little detail is that Cavium have highlighted 25 million dollars worth of optimizations or savings that they can find annualized which basically means there's some workforce reduction coming so hopefully not too many people get hit CenturyLink have brought elastic box again good purchase CenturyLink Traditionally started off in the web hosting and server hosting business, morphed into a cloud provider. Fairly big in Canada, fairly big in Europe, not so in North America. Elasticbox gives them a lot more flexibility. Good purchase. Samsung and Joyent's an interesting one. Samsung's well known for the likes, obviously, of the Samsung phones, their tabs, their notes. Uh, but they're one of these companies that are huge, massive, massive multinational company. Joint is purchased a small change for them, effectively. But it does give them 
the ability to grow their own cloud. Samsung have made some interesting purchases over the last couple of months. Uh, they've their loop they purchased Loop Pay, which becomes part of that, which become the basis of their Samsung Pay per environment. And the purchase of Joint gives them access to obviously Joint's whole array of cloud-based services. So a good purchase. Another interesting part is they're floating Joint as a independent company subsidiary of their of, of Samsung. So they're still going to be allowed to do what they do, but obviously they get access to all their uh, their technology. So again, a good good play for Samsung allows it to play bigger and better against Apple now the big one Microsoft and LinkedIn now when this and that was announced everyone was like what why you know I even tweeted quite a witty comment about uh, hey boss uh, we found some loose change down the back of the so so first how much Oh, about 26.2 billion. Oh, go and buy something. You bought what? On first look, we thought, where's the synergies? Why Why have Microsoft bought LinkedIn? And on the whole, first look, very, very odd. However, if you just move the cover slightly, LinkedIn is a massive advertising site. MSN is languishing around. It's still there. I haven't logged on to MSN in... I don't even know when the last time I logged on to MSN was. It's filled with professionals. Professionals who are CEOs, CTOs, CIOs. Professionals like you and I. Contractors, consultants across all ranges of business. These are not your average Facebook user who's posting pictures of their cats and funny videos of dogs jumping off off bridges into water. These are serious people. It makes sense. A lot of people are saying that they've paid over the odds and on paper it looks like they have paid over the odds. I think they've paid a 45% premium on the share price of LinkedIn. But I think this is one of those slow burner acquisitions that suddenly you'll go, ah, that's why they bought it. Okay, finally, for those of virtualization people have been living under a rock for the last couple of years there's this wonderful thing new new thing in inverted commas because nothing in IT is new and I remember zones called docker now docker is a container platform and VMware have finally GA'd photon controller photon controller is their docker engine or their container engine so now we can have our micro P, micro VMs running our containers within our virtualization environments which gives us a lot more stability than a standard physical environment which is okay I can understand from the docker perspective why they they don't they're not that worried about it because containers are supposed to be cattle not pets so it doesn't matter if they get killed or died off they shouldn't have state this should be stateless they should be just running but the photon controller you get all the benefits of DRS HA, etc, etc. I don't know if it's been decided whether this is a good idea yet or not, but I'm still on the fence with containers. I, I still remember 2002, 3, 4 when VMware and Solaris containers were around. I suppose the advantages of new, new containers is they're x86 compatible. I don't know. We'll see. News from our sponsors. Veeam have been positioned as leaders in the Magic Quadrant by Gartner for d data center backup and recovery, so no surprise there. It's a very good product. I expect it to be up there. Cerber have released version 9 of their automating workload placements product. This, as I said, enables better placements across AWS, Azure, and 
IBM SoftLayer Clouds. HITRUST has released a study that indicates that the software defined data center is reaching critical point in adoption. Uh, this can be found at http slash slash www.hitrust.com forward slash cloud hyphen sddc hyphen study. Puppet Labs are gearing up for their Puppet conference in San Diego on the 19th and 21st of October. I think that early bird discounts are still available for the short term, so head on over there. It can be found on details can be found on the website or in the event calendars on the virtualization practice website. Now, SwiftStack won a major deal with Bet365. They're one of the world's leading online gambling companies to provide storage based on Swift and they've just been included in the Red Herrings list of top 100 private companies in the UK in the US so well done to them. Uh, VM Turbo have drawn the first two tickets in their VM World's sweepstakes and there's still four more up for grabs so if you haven't already entered their sweepstakes for a free VM World tickets, uh, mosey on over to VM, World, VM Turbo's website at www.vmturbo.com slash VM Turbo hyphen VM World hyphen sweepstakes and enter. It's worth a punt. VM World is a very, very good conference. So all that now remains is to thank you for listening and to remind you that uh, if you see something that you think is newsworthy, please send it to news at virtualization practice. So thank you and goodbye.